Hello, everyone. We're just going to give it a few more moments for more people to log in. All right, good morning everyone from the Boston area in the Northeastern United States. And to all of you joining us from around the world, good afternoon and good evening and welcome to this webinar about cybersecurity for managers, a playbook, a course offered with MIT Sloan Executive Education. My name is Mark Linehan. I'm a webinar facilitator with Emeritus and I'm gonna be taking us through this webinar today. So the first thing that I would like us all to do uh, before we get started, as I'd like you to pay attention at the bottom of your screen, I'd like you to find that chat box that's at the bottom right hand side. And there that chat box, what I want to do is we're going to do a little activity first before we get started with talking about the course. Uh, in that chat box, we're going to be sharing a link uh, for how secures my password.net. We want you to go ahead and click on that link, open it up in a browser window. And in howsecuresmypassword.net, we want you to think of a password that's similar in complexity to the, one, to the password that you normally use. And we'd like you to type it in the search window. And it's gonna tell you how long it would take a computer to crack your password. And what we'd like you to do is we want you to put that in the chat box. So it will tell you how long would it take a computer to crack your password. And so very quickly, let's uh, take a look and see. And while more people are joining us, we'd also like everyone to say hello to us. So if you can uh, open up your chat box while you're doing this password activity. Also, another thing I wanna do is some housekeeping. Make sure that uh, where it says two, right above where you type your message, make sure that it's uh, selected all panelists and attendees so that everyone can see everyone's answers. Hello, hello. And while we're saying hello and while we're working on, um, and while we're typing in and checking how secure our passwords is, as you say hello, can you uh, let everybody know where you're logging in from today? From London, from Paris, from Montreal, Houston, Sacramento, good morning. Egypt. India, Switzerland, Washington DC, Mexico City, wonderful. So as you can see, we have people joining us from all over the world. You're gonna find this, this course has a wonderful international cohort. Australia, Portugal, Brazil, South Africa, welcome everyone. So now I want everyone to take a moment. So go to that, um, go to that link I provided that's in the chat box. How secure is my password.net? And go ahead and come up with a password that's similar to the one that you're uh, that you normally use and put it in the search window, the search box. All right, 34,000 years. Excellent. Do we have any other results? 415 million years. Excellent. Seven months, 204 million years, 573 quadrillion years. All right. One trillion years. Two hundred and four million years. Excellent. So as you can see, we have a wide range of results. And the reason why we bring this up, the reason why we're starting with this uh, activity is because we wanted to go over some brief password facts. So while we're talking about cybersecurity, 10%, over 10% of all the passwords in use in the entire world are just 20 passwords. Passwords like one, two, three, four, five, six account for over 10% of all the passwords in use across the globe. The minimum recommended password length is 13 characters. So if your personal password is less than 13 characters, then you're using fewer than the minimum recommended password length. And 40% of organizations store their passwords 
in a Word document or spreadsheet, so somewhere that is not secure. So that is one of the things we're gonna be talking about uh, when we're covering this course. So very, uh, so now, I would like to introduce our speaker today. We are so honored today to have Isabella DeMombro with us. She is the Assistant Director for Digital Deliveries at MIT Sloan Executive Education. Good morning, Isabella. Good morning. Uh, it's so nice to see everyone online. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, please excuse us. Our, my colleague Lauren was planning on joining today, but, uh, but is caught out of office, so it'll just be me for today. Excellent. We are in excellent hands. And also today we are thrilled to have Paul Roberts, a learning facilitator with Emeritus, who will be taking us through the course today. Good morning, Paul. Hey, Mark. Thank you so much for uh, having me and uh, really excited to uh, talk to our prospective students about the course. We're looking forward to it. So, and of course, again, I'm Mark Linehan and I'm a webinar facilitator with Emeritus. So today what we're going to be doing uh, over the course of this webinar uh, for the next uh, 40 minutes or so is we're going to be discussing the learning outcomes of this course. We're going to be talking about the course itself. Paul will be taking us through uh, module by module, Cybersecurity for Managers, a playbook. We're going to cover the assignments and key dates uh, that you want to be marking off in your calendar. And then we're going to follow up at the end. We're going to have uh, hopefully about a 15 minute Q&A. And so before we start the presentation, I want to address your, um, direct your attention, excuse me, uh, to the Zoom window. You'll see a box that says Q&A. Now that is where you can put in your specific questions for the modules, for the course, for the MIT Sloan experience. Any questions you have about the course or the school, go ahead and put those questions in the Q&A box during the presentation. And then at the Q&A at the end, we will happily go through all those questions and answer as many of them as we can. So from here, I'm gonna turn things over to Isabella and she's gonna tell us a little bit more about MIT Sloan. Take it away, Isabella. Great, thank you so much, Mark. Um, if you don't mind advancing to the next slide, perfect. Um, so before we get too much further, I just wanted to cover um, what you can hope to get from this program. Um, you know, after you've successfully completed the program, you'll be able to select and use the right frameworks to enhance cybersecurity decision making in your organization and, and really your own personal life. Um, you'll be able to assess risk, improve defenses, and reduce vulnerabilities in your organizations. Um, and you'll be able to speak the language of cybersecurity to enable informed conversations with your technology teams um, and really all of your colleagues at your organization to make sure that um, cybersecurity is the strongest as it can be at your organization. Um, leading us throughout this uh, learning journey are three of our fantastic Sloan faculty. Um, Stuart Madnick um, is the uh, John Norris McGuire Professor of Information Technology is Emeritus at the Sloan School, and he's the founding director of cybersecurity at MIT Sloan. Um, Professor Madnick's involvement in cybersecurity research goes back to 1979, when he co-authored the book Computer Security. Currently, he heads cybersecurity at MIT Sloan, um, and he holds a PhD in computer science from MIT um, and has been, has been a faculty at MIT since 1972, so really a lot of um, good, good uh, long-term knowledge there. So then we have Carrie Pearlson joining us. She's the Executive Director of Cybersecurity at MIT Sloan. Um, she has held various positions in academia and industry, including at Babson College, the University of Texas at Austin, Gartner's Research Board, CSC, and AT&T. Um, her research spans MIS, business strategy, and organizational design. Her current research studies how organizations build a culture of cybersecurity and how organizations build trust to mitigate cyber breaches. And you'll be hearing a lot more from her if you take the program. Um, and then finally, we have Michael Siegel, who is a principal research scientist at the MIT Sloan School of Management and is currently the co-director of the Productivity from Information Technology or PROFIT project. Um, his research interests include the integration and use of information from multiple sources and the use of modeling and data analytics to analyze complex systems. So all of these faculty are um, involved in a research center here at um, MIT, um, Cybersecurity at MIT Sloan. It, it is an interdisciplinary research consortium. Um, it pulls from research from faculty all across MIT, not just the business school here at Sloan. Um, and it, um, it's a research consortium um, companies from various industries can sign up for membership and um, really engage, not just um, pull from the learnings of the faculty, but really engage in the conversations and build a community of um, cybersecurity best practices. So um, there's a lot of really rich um, 
academic and industry knowledge um, that will be coming from cybersecurity at MIT Sloan and being um, uh, presented to you in this program. So it's, it's really a, a robust program. Um, next slide, please. Perfect. Um, so before we go too much further, I just wanted to address um, one of the myths that gets debunked in this program. It's, it's a, an important one, that cybersecurity is just an issue for IT personnel. It's really not. Cybersecurity is a responsibility of every single person in an organization, from custodians to chief executives. You can have the best firewall, the best antivirus applications that software can buy, but if there's not leadership that builds a strong culture of cybersecurity, that promotes password hygiene, awareness of scams, shared responsibility, then those tools are meaningless. With that in mind, let's talk a little bit about why this program might be a good fit for you. From this program, you'll walk away with a playbook, um, which uh, Paul will talk a little bit more about later. Um, it's a document with clear and actionable next steps to build a cyber resilient culture. Our hope and our goal in creating these materials is that you will use these learnings from this program and take immediate actions to protect your organization, your employees, yourself and your family from numerous cyber threats that exist. And I shouldn't just say protect because the truth is cyber attacks are inevitable. And that is why you will not only learn about protecting data, but also about detecting attacks that may already be underway, um, responding to those attacks and recovering from them. At MIT, our motto is men's and manis, or mind and hand. Our teaching and research philosophy is practical application, to put into practice what you learn. This motto implies that we not only think about great things, but we also do great things. MIT believes in generating new ideas and building them to improve lives around the world. This is what sets our programs apart. We do not solely stress the knowledge of how to do something, but we really require you to get your hands dirty and uh, you know, action what you learn in this program. Um, this is the approach that we take in all of our programs and certainly what you will find in this program. Carrie Pearlson, one of the creators and faculty presenters in this program, feels passionately that the product of this program is a conversation, a conversation between you as a business leader and your chief security officer, a conversation between you and all of your colleagues, your family, um, in which you ask informed questions like, how are we as an organization measuring cyber risk? What quantitative and qualitative frameworks are we using for this? This program is a learning experience full of energy, engagement, and storytelling. Based on the faculty's extensive knowledge and ongoing research in the field of cybersecurity, this program is interactive and, and current. It maintains the rigor and feel of what you would expect when intending an MIT program. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to, I think, Paul to tell us a little bit more about the nuts and bolts of the program. Hey everybody, how are you? My name is uh, Paul Roberts and I'm the uh, learning facilitator here uh, with uh, our course and I'm really happy to be with you today. I'm going to just take a second and walk us through some of the modules that you'll be um, uh, completing as part of this uh, course and um, then obviously at the end of this discussion we can we can take questions. Um, so you, Christine told you a little bit just about, I'm sorry, uh, Isabella told you a little bit about the um, overview of the course. And so what my goal now is to just talk to you a little bit about, you know, the different parts of it. Um, our first module, uh, so we've got a number of different modules that you complete, uh, generally about once a week. And the first one is understanding the threat landscape. Um, and in this module, you're going to understand how to identify and discuss like common threats and practices in cybersecurity. Um, you know, one of the really interesting things about information security, cybersecurity, is that it is continually evolving and changing. And I've been writing about it for 17 years. Um, and that's generally because bad guys continue to innovate very rapidly. Um, and good guys respond to that. So our defenses get better. Unfortunately, uh, attacks and threats uh, change and, and also improve over time. Uh, and that's kind of what this chart, chart is showing you, that the gap between what the bad guys are capable of and what the d good guys, the defenders, are capable of uh, is growing, not shrinking over time. And that's a little bit of a frightening concept, but obviously you can 
look in the headlines in your newspaper and understand um, that that's true and what the impact of that is. Um, so our first module, just in the unit, sort of orients ourselves around the pro around that basic kind of problem um, with a lot of examples uh, of you know cutting edge threats and attacks from phishing um, uh, and ransomware. Uh, you know, wide range of different problems that organizations are facing these days. Um, and we just want you to understand how to identify the risks within your own organization, because once you identify them, once you know them, you can start to defend against them. Uh, Mark, next slide. Um, so, to, to, you know, again, the goal of the course is really to help you develop a cybersecurity playbook for your organization, something that both understands or expresses the um, risks that face your organization and also lays out a plan for addressing those risks in a, in a um, kind of structured, uh, sensible way. Throughout the course, we really make an effort to root our discussion and our thinking and planning around best practices. And uh, module two in our course um, introduces you to the NIST cybersecurity framework. This is really widely accepted um, framework from the US uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology or NIST. Um, and it's used by many organizations, large and small, to help them kind of understand and structure their cybersecurity programs. Um, and so the second unit is really introducing our um, students to the NIST cybersecurity framework, talking about the various kind of components of it, um, you know, from identifying your assets, um, understanding you know, um, you know, kind of your governance, compliance risks, uh, risk assessment through to, um, you know, uh, protection, uh, threat detection, and then, um, you know, incident response and recovery, those are kind of the basic components of cybersecurity programs. Um, and so in this course, we have an inter interactive case study uh, in this particular module uh, where we look at actually a, an attack against a manufacturing firm and you know how they how that played out how the firm responded to it how the framework can be applied to sort of a real world situation um, so it's a really useful um, unit and definitely a, uh, an important unit as a as a sort of foundation for building your um, uh, your cybersecurity framework in, in your organization and your cybersecurity playbook as part of this course um, uh, and this is all based in Kind of real world examples. Uh, we actually have one of the authors of the NIST uh, um, framework itself who um, uh, talks about, um, you know, a case study uh, and and kind of how that how that influences the framework. Okay, next slide, Mark. Okay. Um, so our next unit is uh, measuring risk exposure. This is the third module in our program. And it's really about sort of taking a framework like NIST and applying it to actually uh, measuring or assessing risk within your own organization. Risk assessment is a really foundational part of cybersecurity programs. And it's something actually that many organizations have a really hard time doing um, because their businesses are complex, because they've got offices and employees all over the world, because they have many different business partners and customers, all of whom, and contractors, all of whom potentially constitute sources of risk. Um, so uh, one of the key concepts that we try and convey in this is um, thinking about risk as a combination of uncertainty and exposure. Um, and we have a concept within the unit of operational risk, and ha and which involves people, processes, systems, and external events um, uh, as all kind of components of your cyber risk. And how to sort of isolate each of those things and think about them in a way to understand, you know, a at a pretty granular way um, what your organization's risk exposure exposure is. Um, so again, people, processes, systems, um, and external events, um, uh, and, and how they influence uh, operational risk. Next slide, Mark. Yep. Great. And in our next um, unit, uh, it's really it, it, our, our fourth unit, we actually have a sort of simulation, and we and we developed this tool to actually help you, um, I think, kind of 
um, understand how this, um, uh, you know, how actually implementing a cybersecurity program might work in terms of outcomes, right? Which is something that's always difficult to assess. Um, so the fourth unit is improving defenses through systems and technology. Um, and using this tool, we kind of give you an opportunity to budget um, different aspects of a cybersecurity program over time, and then to see how that translates into um, outcome, which in this case is like the profitability of your organization. Um, so this is a simulation um, that really works on or helps you to assess like how as a IT security leader, leader within the organization, you might allocate resources over time and what might be most effective in terms of making your, you know, improving your organization's defenses. Um, and so in, in this simulation, there are like different um, uh, sliders or levers for investing in prevention, detection, um, and response. And you, again, you can map it out over a number of different, you know, fiscal years to see how, for example, you know, investing heavily early on in things like, um, you know, prevention or detection might impact your overall risk exposure over time and then translate into more profits for your organization versus how maybe holding back on investments early on might increase the number of compromised systems within your organization, which is going to obviously hamper your organization's ability to, um, to do its job, to make money, to be profitable. So it's a really interesting tool actually. And, and, um, and uh, just speaking as a learning facilitator, a lot of really interesting conversations kind of come out of this unit. Uh, Mark, next slide, please. So, um, you know, one of the really interesting things I think about information security is we, we tend to think of it as a, um, as, as a technology based problem, um, you know, finding the right combination of software and hardware to, you know, keep the hackers out and keep your business secure. Um, but I think really increasingly people are coming to understand that you know, people and culture are at least as important as software and hardware, if not more important in terms of the overall, you know, security of your organization. Um, and so that's why we have this, uh, our fifth module is around focus on building a, a culture of security, of cybersecurity within your organization. Um, and uh, really what we focus on is teaching management tools um, approaches that can kind of positively influence cybersecurity culture within your organization. Um, so, you know, a lot of being a cyber resilient organization is about, you know, the, your employees and what they do, their behaviors within the workplace. Um, and often that is their, how they act within your organization is a reflection of the culture of your organization. Um, do you, is there a culture of, you know, taking shortcuts just to get things done um, or to meet deadlines, regardless of what, for example, the security or privacy impact of those, of those shortcuts might be. So in this module, we really look at that problem, um, look at, you know, organizations from sort of a cultural standpoint and to see how, you know, um, influencing people's behavior um, what tools are available to managers that might influence um, employees' behavior and improve, you know, security as a result. Um, so one of the key components of this module is that we go, we do a case study about a cybersecurity initiative at a, an insurance company and, you know, kind of thinking through the elements that contribute to a cyber aware culture and how those might be leveraged um, within your own organization. Um, again, the goal here is the, the end of the course is the playbook. So all these modules, all these units are kind of helping you to um, understand these problems and then integrate them into your own playbook that ideally will be used within your own organization. No, uh, Mark, next slide. Um, uh, somewhat somewhat related to that um, so uh, you know culture within your organization and then um, at, at an organizational level the sort of ethical um, issues and dilemmas that cybersecurity um, might present for either you as a professional or as an executive 
uh, or as your, uh, for your organization as a whole. Um, really interesting unit, our sixth unit on, on exploring ethics and cybersecurity. Uh, and what we look at, um, b b you know, the goal of this obviously is to get you thinking about ethical considerations, moral and ethical considerations in cybersecurity, um, and the trade-off that often organizations and individuals have to make between privacy and security. The case study we use is actually around the um, case of the San Bernardino shooters here in the United States. These were um, uh, uh, a couple who um, uh, shot up a, a government office in San Bernardino, California. The FBI, as part of their investigation, obtained the um, iPhone of uh, one of the shooters. And, but the, it was locked and encrypted. Um, and the FBI uh, asked Apple basically to uh, unlock the phone for them. And that obviously presented a ethical quandary for Apple, whether to cooperate uh, with the FBI um, and help get access to a, a terrorist's um, you know, cell phone information or to kind of take a stand on behalf of the privacy of its customers um, and you know, not agree to decrypt that um, cell phone um, and help, help law enforcement in that particular investigation. So we look at that uh, question, how Apple responded, how the FBI responded, um, what some of the ethical and moral it issues that were raised. And obviously, there, as with every module, there's a lot of discussion about did Apple do the right thing? Uh, did you know the FBI do the right thing? What would you do in a similar situation? Um, so really interesting um, module there as well. Uh, next slide, Mark. Um, generally, people really, you know, I, it, it, speaking as a learning facilitator, people really enjoy this course and get a lot out of it. Um, and that these course reviews um, kind of speak to that. Um, and, and as you can tell just from Mark's introduction, we, it's a really um, uh, experience-wise and background-wise and, and uh, you know, geography-wise, very diverse group. So there's a lot of uh, kind of cross-pollination of, of ideas and perspectives. Um, so some, some of the comments that we've gotten back over the, over, uh, the course of doing this in, in previous sessions, um, I liked how this module started out with some real-world examples and then zoomed into the structure of the MIT Sloan Cybersecurity program gave me an overall view of the objective, the specifics of what I'll be learning, what I'll come will be. Um, and uh, I enjoyed learning about the NIST framework, how it can be, uh, how to make it extremely efficient, even in smaller companies, uh, like the polls. We do a lot of polls and surveys of our students, and then we talk about the results of those. Um, another uh, respondent really liked the simulation exercise. Uh, that we did, I talked about um, in terms of cybersecurity investments and prevention, detection, response. Pushed me to consider how much we're investing in the area, in each area currently, and make some adjustments. So, um, you know, our again respondents who have taken the course in the past uh, really uh, got a lot out of it. Next slide, Mark. Uh, discussions are a big, and, and this is a lot of what I do as a learning facilitator, is kind of um, lurk on the discussions and um, give comments and feedback and thumbs up to people and promote, promote conversation and engagement. But discussion boards are a big part of each unit. Um, so you're watching videos, you're um, reading material, uh, and then you are participating with your fellow classmates and talking about um, some, of the, some of the prompts and, and um, and questions that are that are asked of participants. So you know, discussion collaboration is definitely an important goal of this course, and um, our discussion boards are really where that a lot of that collaboration happens. Um, so you're going to brainstorm ideas, share resources, and you know, I think what you'll get out of it is sort of this a lot of resources to draw from and help you in in building your playbook and also help you as a kind of uh, budding cybersecurity professional. Um, one discussion that was really good um, early on was uh, respondents were just asked or, or participants were just asked to list some of the sources where they get information about cybersecurity and it generated a really interesting list of websites, blogs, um, you know, information feeds, threat information feeds and otherwise it was, I mean, I'm, I, again, been covering the space for many years, so a lot of them I knew, but there were actually a lot of new ones even in there for me that, uh, that I picked up and added to my list. So, um, Next slide, Mark. 
and again, the, um, the final goal here is the cybersecurity playbook. Um, so this is, um, a, you know, a, a playbook is really just um, a kind of nomenclature within information security as, as something that you would use to execute kind of a plan, whether that's an incident response plan or, or an overall cybersecurity plan for your organization. So the playbook's a set of actions that you can take to improve cybersecurity within your organization. And you know, you, you're building this playbook throughout the course and, that, and then obviously it's a takeaway for you at the end of the course. It's for your personal use and maybe for your organization's use. It's not something that you're sharing with the rest of the course or even with the instructors for, um, beyond kind of a very broad summary um, for the obvious reason that it contains sensitive information information relative to your organization, and it's not something that you should be sharing outside of your organization. So, um, but it is a tool to help you uh, make an action plan based on what you learn in this course. Um, and, you know, the key parts of the playbook are um, kind of the state, uh, you know, correspond to each module in the unit, basically. Each module becomes sort of a chapter in the playbook from, um, you know, the state of cybersecurity management to, you know, NIST framework, um, assessment of cybersecurity risk, um, layered defenses, um, and then sort of culture of cybersecurity and, and building cybersecurity awareness within your employee base. Um, and then the sort of privacy security balance. Next slide, Mark. Um, and this is our cybersecurity. This is kind of who who takes it, uh, who who takes the course. A breakdown of our participants by both experience, years of experience, uh, and industry. Um, as you can see, um, you know, a pretty a pretty diverse group. Um, obviously, some some concentrations industry wise in IT services, banking, and financial services, uh, and then other major industry verticals, healthcare, and so on. Um, but 41% other, so I think that represents, you know, a wide range of participants from a wide range of industries, basically. And then here, um, you know, a really pretty experienced group, and I've been impressed just reading as people introduce themselves at the beginning of the course, like, you know, you get people who have quite a bit of experience either in IT or even in information security who are kind of looking to, um, you know, hone their skills and level up. So um, it's, a, uh, it's a good group and one you're going to learn from, for sure. Um, Mark, next slide. And I already kind of went through this, but yeah, people people really enjoy the course, get a lot out of it, have good things to say about it, um, and obviously take take something away from it. Um, so I'm going to hand back, I think, to Mark um, for the next slide. Is it Mark or is it Isabel? Well, I'm going to have uh, Isabella take us through the certificate of completion from MIT Sloan. Okay. Humble like the little... handoff, Isabella. It's back to you. Great, thanks. Um, so uh, I just want to take a step back for a second for anyone who is, um, you know, first learning about MIT Sloan Executive Education um, through this program. Um, I want to say, you know, welcome, welcome to MIT Sloan. We're really excited to have you potentially join our community. Um, at the end, successful completion of this program, you'll earn a certificate of completion from MIT Sloan Executive Education. Um, I do want to be very clear up front that this is not a degree, um, it's not a degree program. This, this course does not award you any sort of continuing education credits um, or, or counts towards an MBA or anything along those lines, but it does count towards um, our own non-degree executive certificate program here at MIT Sloan. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with MIT Sloan Executive Education, we have a portfolio of over 50 two-day to week-long programs that we offer on campus with a growing portfolio of online programs that also complement that. Um, I think we have 11 live at the moment and are due to release another five or six this year. Um, these programs cover topics anywhere from strategy and innovation, technology operations and value chain management, and leadership and management. Um, our executive certificate program, um, in order to earn an executive certificate through MIT Sloan Executive Education, you would need to complete four of our programs, um, three of which can be completed online and one of which must be completed on campus. Um, and those programs would need to focus in a, a particular subject area, whether that's management and leadership or strategy and innovation. Um, we can, I'll, um, 
post in the chat now a link to our website and that will describe a little bit more about our different tracks. Um, but the executive certificate, um, you can share it on your LinkedIn profile. Um, it's, it's pretty well regarded. And then after you achieve your executive certificate, which again is four days, uh, four programs, um, you can go on to achieve your advanced certificate um, in executive management through MIT Sloan. Um, and that is a, a much larger achievement. Um, it's definitely a larger commitment, but it does come with um, several benefits, including an email for life um, and Sloan affiliate alumni status. Um, in order to achieve your ACE, we refer to it as an ACE and advanced certificate, um, you would need to complete 25 program days. So that might be made up of you know, several two day programs, you might come to campus for a couple of our week long programs and be able to do it that way. Um, you would have to take programs out of each of the tracks. Um, you may use online our online programs to come up with some of those program days, but you would have to come to campus for some of them. Um, but it is it is a big achievement and we um, really encourage everyone to explore the possibility of earning either an executive certificate or going on to achieve their um, advanced certificate. Um, I can speak more to that if there are questions, um, but the completing this program, cybersecurity um, for managers, is the first step to achieving one of those programs. So I, I encourage you to um, head on over to our website and learn a little bit more or reach out. All right, Isabella, thank you. Paul, thank you so much. So friends, uh, this is a six week course and it starts in one week. This course starts on December 19th, 2019. So in one week is when it starts and we put up a calendar for you. Those of you who wanna visualize what a six week course looks like, there it is from December 19th to February 12th. Uh, if you're wondering, those dates marked in red are United States federal holidays, just so that you have that as a point of awareness. So really briefly, before we get to the Q&A and you can ask all your questions that you have about the course to Paul or Isabella, very quickly in summary, this course is gonna help you understand how to manage and lead in an age of cyber threats and how to learn and apply key concepts around cybersecurity to your own organization, but also as Isabella said, to your own life. Cybersecurity is everybody's concern, not just IT. So this course is for everyone. And what's really special about this course is that you're gonna be creating your own cybersecurity playbook. So you're gonna have a list of actionable activities and apply these concepts that you learn, and you're gonna be able to take any questions you have back to your IT and cybersecurity team so that your specialists that work with you in your organization, they will be able to, you will be able to communicate with them better because of this course. So friends, if this course sounds uh, like the perfect course for you, this is exactly what you wanna participate in. Uh, the chat box is gonna have this link popping up right now to apply for this wonderful course. So remember, it starts in one week. It starts on December 19th, 2019. So go ahead and click on that link and apply now. And now, while we have uh, Isabella and Paul for a few more moments, I wanna get right to the Q&A. So uh, let us start, I'm just gonna start um, right from the top. Uh, are there any best practices for building security culture in a high risk tolerance business environment? That's an excellent question. And I think uh, it talks about security culture. And I think Isabella, you spoke to that about building the culture of security, but I don't know uh, if you or Paul want to take that one. Um, I can take it. Um, so w what about building a culture of security in a, in a high risk organization? That's the question. Actually, yeah, it says, are there any best practices for building security culture in a high risk tolerance business environment, or will we be learning about those best practices in this course? Yeah, I mean, again, there are, there are really um, uh, one dedicated unit on culture of security um, that talks about um, approaches that companies are taking to address, you know, problems like, um, you know, uh, phishing and, and uh, you know, third party risk and so on. Um, you know, if it's a, you know, it's a, it's a high risk culture, if you're in finance, obviously, as you can see from the, from the um, participant uh, profile, we have a fair number of people who are coming from industries like healthcare or banking and finance um, that are regulated and, and high risk. And um, so, you know, I think uh, it's, while the course is not 
tailored specifically to those industries or to regulated industries per se. Um, you know, there are going to be a lot of people within the cohort of students and who who are who have that uh, background and perspective. Um, but yes, I mean, that's um, culture of security is a big part of the course. And um, I think the assumption is that, you know, every organization is is high risk. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, we also have a question here. Uh, Paul, I'm going to shoot this question to you. Uh, I think this might be talking about the module where you talk about ethics, but will there be some discussions in the course about the legal aspects of cybersecurity? E yes, uh, without getting specific about the laws in any particular country, because again, obviously our, our students are coming from all over the world, many different countries. Each of those countries has their own set of cybersecurity laws, you know, whether it's the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act here in the United States or, you know, uh, equivalent laws in the UK and, and other countries. Um, so, yes, we talk at a high level about the intersection or the interaction or the interplay, I guess is a better word, the interplay between um, uh, organization's legal obligations to whatever country it operates in, its fiduciary obligations to its shareholders, uh, and larger kind of moral ethical obligations that an individual or a company may have um, to ideas like, um, you know, civil rights, civil liberties, um, privacy, and, and so on. Um, so yes, that's a Part, definitely a part of the curriculum and a part of what we talk about, as I mentioned, you know, the same being Bernardino Shooter and iPhone and Celebrite are, are kind of the uh, centerpiece for that conversation. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. And I actually have a related question that just popped up. Um, some businesses need to meet federal rules and regulations, such as HIPAA, PCI, uh, federal, I see HIPAA, I assume that means like United States federal regulations. Uh, does this program have any focus on those federal rules and regulations, those requirements, and enhance those specific cybersecurity matters? We don't, the course does not delve into um, specific responses to regulations like HIPAA, which is for uh, healthcare information, GDPR, PCI, which is for credit card information. Um, we certainly, especially in the, in the talk discussion we have about cybersecurity frameworks and then this framework, um, you know, compliance and regulatory compliance is, is a big part of understanding what your um, risk and exposure is, given that, you know, compliance to, to regulations is, is a major concern for organizations. So we do talk about, you know, the need to tailor your cybersecurity program around regulatory, uh, regulatory concerns, um, uh, definitely throughout the course and particularly in the, in the um, uh, early early part of the, the course, um, but we don't delve specifically into, you know, best practices for GDPR compliance, best practices for PCI compliance or things like that. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Uh, and there's another question here. Uh, will the program guide us how to deal when there is a cyber attack or will it focus on just how to prevent a cyber attack? And will it include all areas, for example, will it just be talking about on-premise or cloud applications? Like, so could you just talk a little bit about, is this like a prevention of an attack, dealing with an attack? What, what's the balance of that in the course? Um, it's, it's both prevention and, you know, um, uh, again, you, the goal is to build a, uh, a you know, a cybersecurity playbook for your organization and a playbook is going to encompass both prevention and uh, detection and response. So ideally you build a robust cybersecurity playbook uh, or program in your organization that keeps all the bad guys out and keeps all your data and employees safe. You know, the practical reality is hardly any organization is actually able to do that. There are always compromises of one sort or another. And so detection and response have to be part of your playbook, have to be part of your thinking as an organization. And so the course reflects that. Um, there isn't a, as you can tell when I went through it, there isn't a specific unit on incident response um, where you would delve into, you know, what does incident response mean and so on. We talk about incident response as part of this sort of, um, you know, the cycle uh, uh, that, or, you know, the, 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 the 
the full uh, breadth of your playbook and your cybersecurity program encompasses response. And so he's talked about it in that context. And there was another, was there another question? Oh, cloud versus uh, on premises. We, um, no, we don't, we don't, this, this course is not tailored either to, to what type of infrastructure you're protecting, whether it's a physical infrastructure like a data center or virtual infrastructure like, a, you know, cloud, you know, virtual servers hosted on Amazon Web Services or, or Google Cloud or something like that. Um, for the reason that from a security standpoint, while there might be differences in the technology and, and services you use to protect them, you know, the underlying concepts are the same, regardless of whether you're protecting, you know, physical IT assets or virtual ones. Um, and so the course curriculum is largely abstracted from, from the idea of what type of infrastructure you have. Most companies of any size these days have, have both, it's hybrid. So, um, you know, I think that's just the course just reflects that. All right, well, my friends, we have come to the end of our webinar today. I wanna to thank Paul Roberts and Isabella DeMombro. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today. And one last uh, shout out to everyone who joined us on this webinar. Remember to check the chat box and click on that link to apply. The course starts in one week, December 19th, 2019. So please go ahead and click on that link. And we hope to see you all in the classroom. Thank you all so much for joining us. Have a wonderful one, everyone.